I welcome you all in this session of the fluid machines. We have completed with the turbines. Now we are going to start a new topic that is centrifugal pump. We will first discuss the basic principle of operation of the centrifugal pump. Then we will move to the important components of the centrifugal pump, the velocity triangles and other important terminology related to the centrifugal pumps. Now let's first start the principle of operation of the centrifugal pump. I have written on this page in a very simple language the principle of operation of a centrifugal pump. Please note or observe very carefully. Centrifugal pump basically works on the principle of force vortex flow. Now what is the meaning of force vortex flow? When certain mass of liquid is rotated by some external torque then there will be rise in the pressure head of this rotating liquid. And this rise in the pressure head at any point in the rotating liquid is directly proportional to the square of tangential speed at that point. Please again I am repeating. When certain mass of liquid is rotated by an external agency, then there will be rise in the pressure head of the liquid in a radial outward direction. Then there will be rise in the pressure head of the rotating liquid in radial outward direction. This rise in the pressure head at any point in the rotating liquid is directly proportional to the tangential speed at that point. Please note, just take an example, you just put, you just take a bucket of water and start rotating the liquid like this. I think th this, uh, this experiment you have already performed, you just take a bucket of water and start rotating the water in this fashion. Then you will observe there will be rise in the level of liquid inside the bucket in radial outward direction. When you are going to rotate the water of the lip, water of the bucket like this in a very fast manner, then you will observe then there will be rise in the level of liquid in the radial outward direction. This is nothing but this is the force vortex flow. It means that when a mass of liquid is rotated by some external means, then there will be rise in the pressure head of the liquid in the radial outward direction. And this rise in the pressure head is always directly proportional to the square of the tangential speed at that point. At any point if you want to calculate pressure rise then first of all calculate the tangential speed of that point which will be omega multiplied by r. So the rise in the pressure has is directly proportional to the tangential speed at that point that is square of the tangential speed of that point that is u square. Now please what happens in case of centrifugal pump? In a centrifugal pump the liquid is rotated by a rotating element which is known as impeller. Please note in centrifugal pump the liquid is rotated the liquid is rotated by a rotating element which is known as impeller and liquid is forced to flow in radial outward direction and the liquid is forced to flow in radial outward direction by the impeller as a result of this the liquid is discharged at higher pressure head because as the radius is increasing the pressure head is also increasing please note Please note from this relation, as radius is increasing, the pressure head will also be increasing. Therefore, in a centrifugal pump, a rotational, a rotating element is there which is known as impeller. And impeller forces, impeller forces the water to flow in radial outward direction. As a result of that, the water will be delivered at a higher pressure head. So note that the centrifugal pump, in centrifugal pump, the flow is in radial outward direction. It is a radial flow machine. The flow in centrifugal pump, the flow in centrifugal pump is in radial outward direction, in radial outward direction. So it is a radial outward flow machine. It is a radial outward flow machine. Centrifugal pump is a radial outward flow machine. Just reverse of inward flow reaction turbine. Radial outward flow machine. I think the principle of operation of the centrifugal pump is very much clear to you all. You need to remember these lines are very important for you. Okay, I think principle of operation is very much clear to you. Now let's observe a centrifugal pump with all its important components. Please note. This is the centrifugal pump. This is the centrifugal pump. Please note this rotational element. This is this is the rotating element. This is the rotating element. This is the shaft of this rotating element which is coupled with the shaft of the motor or some engine. So this is the rotating element of the centrifugal pump and this rotating element is known as impeller and it is rotating in this direction. It is rotating in anti-clockwise manner. So this rotating element, this rotating element is known as impeller. Please note this rotating element of the centrifugal pump is known as impeller. 
impeller now this impeller consists of number of moving wings these are the wings on the impeller and these wings are these wings are backward curved wings these wings are backward curved wings backward curved wings these wings are the backward curved wings a centrifugal pumps impeller consists of a series of backward curved wings these are the backward curved wings please note the meaning of backward and forward curved wings when you are have a vein is like this and if vein is facing if the water is facing this side of the vein then it is a forward curved vein this is a forward game it means when you are rotating the liquid like this then this serves as a forward curved vein but when you are rotating the liquid in this fashion when this face of the vein this face of the vein faces the liquid then it becomes a backward curved vein so since here this backward face is facing the water therefore it is a backward curved vein so impeller of the centrifugal pump is fitted with backward curved veins backward curved veins please note now this is the impeller now this impeller is rotating in anti clockwise direction in anti clockwise direction the veins are the backward curved veins the another important component is this casing the another important component of the centrifugal pump is the casing casing is the another important component of centrifugal pump this is the suction pipe for suction of the suction of the liquid and this is the delivery pipe delivery pipe is fitted with the delivery valve and suction pipe is fitted with the foot valve and strainer please these are the five important components of the or five important parts of the centrifugal pump what they are first is impeller impeller this casing casing this is delivery pipe delivery pipe this is suction pipe and this foot valve and strainer these are the important components of a centrifugal pump now how the centrifugal pump works please note first of all the water is withdrawn or water is withdrawn from this sump or reservoir of water in the eye of the impeller this section is known as the eye of the impeller this section is known as the eye of the impeller the water is withdrawn or water is drawn from the sump or reservoir of the water into the eye of the impeller this section is known as the eye of the impeller now this water is continuously rotated by means of impeller and it is forced to flow in radial outward direction the water is forced to flow in radial outward direction by the impeller the water is rotated and it is forced to flow in a radial outward direction please observe the flow is in radial outward direction the flow inside the impeller is in radial outward direction so the water is continuously rotated by means of impeller and it is forced to flow in radial outward direction now what happens when impeller is rotating the water in radial outward direction then there is increase in the pressure as well as the kinetic energy of the water when water is rotated by impeller and it is forced to flow in radial outward direction then there will be increase in the static pressure as well as the kinetic energy of the liquid there will be increase in the static pressure as well as the kinetic energy of the liquid means at the as exit of the impeller at the exit of the impeller this is inlet to the impeller this is exit to the impeller at the exit to the impeller vein or impeller the water will come at a high pressure as well as at a high kinetic energy the water will come at a high pressure as well as at a high kinetic energy now please note then the water is allowed to flow th through this casing then the water is allowed to flow through the casing now please note the the casing is of diverging type the casing is of diverging type that the area of flow is continuously increasing please observe the area of flow inside the casing is continuously increasing so this is a diverging type casing which is known as volute casing please note at the exit of the impeller now the water enters the casing and inside the casing the water is flowing in such a manner that the area of the flow is continuously increasing that is the casing is designed in such a way that the area of flow is increasing it means that this is a diverging casing which is known as volute casing now why the casing has been made diverging please note since the water is coming at a high pressure and high kinetic energy at the exit of the impeller now the kinetic energy of the water the kinetic energy of the water can be converted into the pressure energy by allowing the water to flow through this diverging passes as we know the property of the diverging passes that in a diverging passes the pressure increases at the expense of kinetic energy that is the pressure increases and the kinetic energy decreases when certain liquid is allowed to flow through a diverging passes the kinetic energy decreases while the pressure energy increases so same happens over here the casing is of diverging cross section that is it is a volute casing 
when the water flows through the casing the kinetic energy of the water is further converted into the pressure energy and the water can be delivered to very high uh, delivered at a very high pressure head i think the function of casing is very much clear to you the casing basically is of diverging type and it converts the kinetic energy at the ex in impeller exit into the pressure energy at the exit of the delivery wall or okay so the function of the diverging casing is to convert the kinetic energy into the pressure energy so that the water can be lifted to a very high head now the, there is a suction pipe the suction pipe is used to withdraw water from the sump or reservoir it is fitted with a foot valve and a strainer foot valve is basically a one directional valve or one way type of valve and it opens in only upward direction foot valve is a one way valve which opens only in the upward direction and a strainer a strainer is used to remove the solid impurities from the water so that only liquid enters the centrifugal pump the strainer is basically a wire mesh or or it has basically holes which are punch punctured into a platform so that the pure water or water without any solid moves inside the centrifugal pump and there is the delivery pipe which is fitted with the delivery ball i think the function or important components of the centrifugal pump are clear to you i have written down impeller and this impeller is the rotational element rotating element of the centrifugal pump and it is fitted with the backward curve vanes what is the meaning of backward curve vane i have already told you let's again understand if this is the vane and it is moving in this fashion so that this backward face and toward this vein here is the water then it is a backward curve vein and if the same vein water is in this side it is moving in this direction then it will be forward curve vein backward curve vein so centrifugal pumps impeller is fitted with backward curve veins another important component is casing suction pipe with a foot valve and a strainer and a delivery pipe now please note this height that is to the central this is the central line of the centrifugal pump this is the free surface of water inside the sump or reservoir this height is known as suction head this height is known as suction head denoted by hs the distance between or the vertical gap or vertical height between the free surface of water inside the sump and the central line of the centrifugal pump is known as suction head the the vertical distance between the cent between the central line of the centrifugal pump and the point of delivery and the point of delivery means the point where the water is delivered is known as delivery head please note these two heads in this diagram itself this height is known as suction suction head and the, from here to the point of delivery the height is known as delivery head suction head and delivery head now please a different type of casing is also used a different type of casing is also used i am going to give you the diagram of such a casing as well because now this is an, another different kind of casing which is fitted with guide vanes please note please note this is the impeller this is the impeller which is fitted with the backward curving this section is the impeller impeller now please note outside the impeller these are the guide vanes these are the guide vanes inside the impeller is surrounded by a series of guide vanes note over here the impeller this is the impeller and it is surrounded by a series of guide vanes series of guide vanes and these guide vanes are attached to a ring which is known as a diffuser these guide vanes are attached to the ring which is known as the diffuser so this whole is known as diffuser please note this is the impeller the impeller is surrounded by a series of guide vanes the series of guide vanes are mounted on a ring which is known as diffuser so this is a casing with the guide vanes here the guide vanes have been provided now what is the function of these guide vanes these guide vanes are known are together known as diffuser now what will be the function of diffuser over here please note when the water is discharged at the exit of impeller it enters the guide vanes and now these guide vanes passes the blade channel area inside the guide vanes is of diverging type the blade channel area inside the guide vanes means when the water is discharged at the impeller it enters the guide vanes or it enters the diffuser inside the diffuser the the channel section area or the blade passes area or the blade channel area is of diverging type so this diverging type area again ensures that the kinetic energy of the liquid is converted into the pressure energy 
means here we are not diverging the casing rather we are attaching another member that is impeller is surrounded by a diffuser and diffuser is, diffuser is mounted with guide wings and the blade channel area of the guide wings is diverging type this is diverging section diverging blade channel area so in diverging blade channel area inside the guide wings inside the when the water is flowing through the guide wings the blade channel area is diverging type which ensures that the kinetic energy is further converted into the pressure energy so this is another type of casing where the casing is fitted fitted with the guide wings or casing is fitted with the diffuser now so the principle of operation is clear to us that the water enters the impeller the impeller imparts the pressure energy and kinetic energy to the water and the kinetic energy at the exit, um, exit of the impeller is further converted into the pressure energy by means of casing. The casing may be volute casing that is of diverging cross section and the casing may also be fitted with the guide wings that is diffuser and the area is of diverging type so that the kinetic energy at the exit, exit of the impeller is converted into the pressure energy. So this is the basic principle of operation of the centrifugal pump, the important components of the centrifugal pump. Now we will note velocity triangles for a centrifugal pump. Please note, observe very carefully the velocity triangles for a centrifugal pump. Let me take care of a rotor. Let me take care of a rotor. Rotor means impeller. This is the impeller of the centrifugal pump. This is the impeller of the centrifugal pump. Impeller of the centrifugal pump. impeller of the centrifugal pump it is fitted with it is fitted with a means backward curving it is fitted with a backward curving means it is having angular speed omega in anti clockwise direction this is the inner and outer radii this is r1 this is r2 the water enters the, the water enters the impeller at point 1 entry point the water leaves the impeller at point 2 this is exit point the water enters the impeller at point 1 that is at a smaller radius and water leaves the impeller water leaves the impeller at the larger radius this is indicating that the flow is in radial outward direction the flow is in radial outward direction the flow is in radial outward direction i have already told you that centrifugal machine is a radial outward flow machine it is a radial outward flow machine so flow is in radial outward direction so water enters at the smaller radius and leaves at a larger radius which are entry at r1 exit at r2 now the blade speed the speed of the blade at inlet would be u1 that is omega 1 r1 and the blade speed at exit will be perpendicular to r2 that is this is u2 which is omega 2 r2 the blade speed at inlet and exit u2 is perpendicular to r2 tangential speed and u1 is perpendicular to r1 this is the blade speed at inlet and exit u1 and u2 now please note inside one point you have to note over here that the entry of water is radial at inlet please note the entry of water is radial at inlet. In Francis turbine, we observed the discharge is radial at outlet. But in centrifugal pump, the entry is radial. The entry of water is radial at inlet. Please note. In Francis turbine, we observed the discharge is radial at outlet. V2 was leaving in the radial out radial direction. But in the in the centrifugal pump, the entry of the water is radial at inlet. Water enters the impeller one in a radial direction. In a radial direction. So let's observe the velocity triangle. First of all, we have to draw the relative component of velocity, which is tangential to the wing. A relative component of velocity V R1. This is the relative component of velocity. Water enters with relative velocity, which is always tangential to the wing. First of all, draw relative velocity. And we have to go with this vector addition V R plus U is equals to V. Please note. So this is the relative velocity with which the jet enters the vein or with which the water enters the vein. Sorry. Relative velocity VR1 with which the water enters the vein. Now I have to add U in this VR1. I have to add U in VR. So U would be added. Is this this is the U? Just put this U over here. 
when u would be added u1 in vr1 it will complete the vector addition but since the radial intended entry of water is radial at inlet therefore component v1 would be always along the radius this component v1 would always be along the radius therefore this connecting link will be u1 this is the velocity triangle at inlet this is the velocity triangle at inlet please note how i have drawn first of all i draw vr1 vr1 is always tangential to the vein the relative velocity is always tangential to the vein for shockless entry this is vr1 now i have to add u vector u1 vector in vr1 vector i have to add u1 vector in vr1 vector that which will give me v1 vector so since the direction of u1 is this i have to put this vector over here i have put down u the the head of u has been connected with the tail of vr1 therefore this completes the vector addition now this joining side this connecting side will be the v1 vector now why have drawn v1 like this because entry of the water is radial at inlet means this component v1 has to be along the radius this v1 will be along the radius this ensures the radial entry this ensures the radial entry at the inlet so v1 will always be along the radius at exit draw the velocity triangle at exit in the same manner please note this is vr2 relative velocity with which the water is leaving the vein at exit vr2 i have to add u2 in vr2 put this over here this u2 has been added into vr2 this is vr2 the tail of the u2 has been connected with the head of vr2 which completes the vector addition now this will be the resulting resulting vector v2 this would be the resulting vector v2 this would be the resulting vector v2 vr2 u2 this would be the resulting vector v2 now components of u2 two components of v2 one along the radius this component along the radius we know that this component is known as vf2 the component along the radius is known as vf2 and this component of v2 is known as vw2 this small component is vw2 u2 is whole whole is u2 this is there are two components of u2 one is vf2 another one is vw2 so this is vw2 well component in the direction of blade speed in the direction of blade velocity vw2 well component and this vf2 in the radial direction to ensure that the flow is in radial outward direction the vf2 is in radial direction to ensure that the flow is in radial direction so these are the velocity triangles at inlet and exit this is again blade angle at inlet denoted by theta this is the blade angle at the exit denoted by phi this angle is beta i think the velocity triangles are clear to you velocity triangles are clear to you this is u1 this is u1 v1 vr1 theta this angle alpha is equals to 90 degree in this case alpha is equals to 90 degree please note one more point here vw1 would be zero here vw1 is zero because v1 ha is having no component in the direction of motion of the blade vw1 would be zero please relate this triangle with the triangle of the turbine which i have already given you you will find that vw1 is equals to zero now please let's move forward the velocity triangles we have drawn let's move forward now what i am going to do is i am going to calculate the work done in this case now work done by the impeller per second is given by a work done by impeller per second per second which i am going to tell as impeller power so work done by impeller per second work done by impeller per second which is the impeller power is given by vw2 u2 into m dot this is again from the euler's equation since vw1 is zero since vw1 is equals to zero therefore 
वर्क डन बाई इम्पेलर पर सेकेंड ऑन वाटर वर्क डन बाई द इम्पेलर पर सेकेंड ऑन वाटर इज गिवन बाय एम डॉट सॉरी डब्ल्यू इक्वल्स टू डब्ल्यू डॉट इक्वल्स टू विच इज नॉन एज द इम्पेलर पावर इज क्वेश्चन एम डॉट वी डब्ल्यू टू यू टू एम डॉट वी डब्ल्यू टू यू टू नाउ वर्क डन बाई इम्पेलर पर यूनिट वेट ऑफ वाटर वर्क डन बाई इम्पेलर पर यूनिट वेट ऑफ वॉटर स्ट्राइकिंग पर सेकेंड वर्क डन बाई इंपेलर पर यूनिट वेट ऑफ वॉटर स्ट्राइकिंग पर सेकेंड इज गिवन बाई वर्क डन बाई इंपेलर पर यूनिट वेट ऑफ वॉटर स्ट्राइकिंग पर सेकेंड मीन वर्क डन डिवाइडेड बाई एम डॉट जी पर यूनिट वेट ऑफ वॉटर स्ट्राइकिंग पर सेकेंड दैट इज डब्ल्यू डॉट बाई एम डॉट जी विच इज आई पी डॉट एम डॉट जी गिवन बाय वी डब्ल्यू टू यू टू बाई जी दिस होल क्वान्टिटी इंडिकेट्स इम्पेलर पावर पर यूनिट वेट ऑफ वॉटर स्ट्राइकिंग पर सेकेंड और वर्क डन पर यूनिट वेट ऑफ वॉटर स्ट्राइकिंग पर सेकेंड दिस इज द वर्क डन बाई द इम्पेलर वर्क डन बाई द इम्पेलर ऑन द वॉटर पर यूनिट वेट ऑफ वॉटर स्ट्राइकिंग पर सेकेंड एंड इफ यू विल फाइंड द डायमेंशन ऑफ दिस टर्म यू विल फाइंड दैट दिस इज दिस रिप्रेजेंट्स अ काइंड ऑफ हैड दिस रिप्रेजेंट्स अ काइंड ऑफ हैड सो दिस क्वान्टिटी ऑल्सो रिप्रेजेंट्स this quantity also represents the head imparted head imparted by the impeller head imparted to the water by the impeller this quantity is a diamond if you will find the dimensions of this term you will have dimension as meter and meter is the dimension of height or head therefore this whole term that is impeller power per unit weight of water striking per second is also known as head imparted by the impeller or head developed by the impeller it is the head imparted by the impeller or head developed by impeller head developed by impeller i think it is clear this is head developed or head imparted by the impeller to the water and this head is known as oiler head oiler head this head is known as oiler head represented by he so he oiler head is vw2u2 by g this is the head which has been imparted this is the head which has been imparted by the impeller to the water okay now let's take care of one important head that is the manometric head that is the manometric